Hey guys, welcome to Massis Outdoors. This is the division of Chop Shop Customs and Massis 32210. Today I'm going to sit here and do a, the, one of the best reviews on a product that I've used for such a long time. It's something that you can acquire very easily. You could even purchase it. And what I'm talking about is the Billy Goat 2600 BC Brush Cutter. This thing's phenomenal. If you own a large piece of land, if you uh, if you go hunting and you need to cut trails, different things, like this thing's been so phenomenal. I rented this machine originally uh, three years ago when I originally purchased my property and started doing some brush cutting with it to start taking it down from the thick overgrown force that was to start making it manageable to do uh, logging operation to start removing trees, etc. So I think it's time that I actually do this review and show you the features on what this machine can do and let's get started. I'm going to show you overview of all the controls, how this thing operates and runs and we're going to go from there. Well here's the mighty uh, it's the Outback brush cutter made by Billy Goat. I love this machine, it's been phenomenal. Like I said I rented, my, I rented the original one about three years ago. I used it for one whole day. I got about three quarters of an acre. All the brush cut out with it, and I was I was so happy with it that approximately a year and a half ago, when I got back on this property, I went and re-rented this exact machine. Now, don't let the stickers fool you. Even though it says Home Depot Tool Rental, this is my machine. I went ahead and purchased this. I rented it. Maybe it was probably three hours later. I called the guy and said look. I'm not bringing it back because I rented it from one of the Home Depot's deep in the city I was like it was end of the year So I told the guy I was like I know end of the year y'all sell off a lot of your power equipment to get new equipment He said yeah, we worked a deal out for twelve hundred dollars for this unit Which is phenomenal Since it was a rented machine on um, this style. There's no way to tell the hours that was on it but it was their time for them to sell it. Pay twelve hundred for this unit, brand new. You're going to spend around four thousand for this unit. So twelve hundred wasn't bad. Only thing I've done is just basic maintenance of oil change. The belts about several weeks ago. The belts were original to this machine. The front spring came loose, causing the deck belt to the, to give grenading the transmission hydro uh, hydrostatic transmission belt to give which wasn't too bad on my part because I went ahead and replaced the deck belt with a Kevlar and the the trans uh, the hydrostatic transaxle whatever you want to call it just replace it with a standard belt since the front deck belts gonna end up taking more abuse um, besides that <clears throat> eventually here in the next couple weeks I'm gonna put it in my shop and I'm going to probably rebuild or, rebuild or retune up that carburetor because it is running a hair rich. But let's get on to the, some of the features and controls. Up here, this is like a floating style deck. Um, this one on the 2600 beast on the 2600 brush cutter, the deck will also swivel left and right, which is awesome when you're going uh, different style hills. You notice you got a front push guard that is phenomenal. Let's see if I can find anything in this vicinity. Like those trees right there, those little small ones, believe it or not, I can actually grind the base of them down and bring it down to level. And you can see all this all this mulch that was created by this machine. This, a week ago, was super thick. Everything that you see laying on top of the ground is stuff that I've ate up the bases of it and dropped them. This just has to be picked up, but the ground itself is completely brush-free. Like I said, all this just needs to be picked up and it's going to the fire pile. But besides that, you got solid rubber tires. There's no air in these, which is awesome. So you're not worrying about puncturing it with like little uh, roots and stuff sticking out the ground. Solid, complete rubber tires. As far as basic operation of this machine, if you decide to rent one of these or buy it, it's so simple to use. We'll start right here. This is your throttle. All the way up is uh, turtle. All the way down is rabbit. 
Down here is your choke, push and pull. You even got a sticker right here to tell you the direction of the handles. This side right here to your left is going to be your reverse. The one right here on the right side, uh, yeah, right side is going to be your forward. You got nice little guards, and those do come in handy. <clears throat> and this one here with the orange that activates the clutch for the blade. And it's even got a little sticker showing you that. Well, it had it. It would show that if it's in the down position, it engages. If it's in the up position, it disengages. It's even got the picture of a blade, even showing you the rotation of it. Um, besides that, you got your oil fill and your dipstick, your pull starter, your gas, your air filter. Basics of all operations, and if you this thing is low on oil for any reason, this little bell in here will start dinging to let you know to shut the machine off and check your oil. Now, the one thing I do want to make sure I explain with the forward controls treat it as just like a hydrostatic ride mower when you push your lever forward the more you push it forward the faster the unit's going to go same thing with this the more you squeeze this the harder you squeeze it the faster this machine will go the forward speed is about three times forward speed than what you're going to get out of your reverse the reverse is very slow even with the unit pulled all the way back and that's so you don't run yourself over with the machine. Other than that, this unit goes pretty quick and you could tear up some stuff. So if you're gonna start using this machine, start out with squeezing the handle very slowly until you get accustomed to how fast this unit will move. I'm gonna throw on the GoPro harness mount. So I'm gonna try to keep this footage very, uh, trying to keep it very much stable. And I'll use a tripod because I really want to show you what this thing can take down. We have a lot of brush to take down in the back of this field. I'm trying to get all this done uh, this winter before spring. So that way I can at least get this part of the property finished. And we still got some more over there to do. Because I do want to put a go-kart track in here sooner or later for me and the kids. But one thing I neglected to mention. This unit comes with a Honda. This is uh, the GXV390 cc overhead valve motor this thing's very phenomenal <clears throat> minimal maintenance change the oil you'll probably change your oil more than you ever do the air filter on this unit uh, unless you're encountering super dusty uh anything super dusty type environment but as much as i've used it i've constantly checked the air filter and it's got a pre-filter on it neither one looks bad at all so let me go ahead, I'm going to crank this unit up and go ahead and move it over there, and we'll start setting y'all up and letting y'all see what this thing can do. You can see how mighty this uh, this machine can be. 
It's literally like a lawnmower on steroids. You see right here we had two palmetto bushes. I completely took them down to just about where the blade, let's see if we can get you down here. You can see literally the blade flattened them out. Grinded up everything into mulch. <clears throat> and since this is all really, this whole side of the property has never been touched. Um, until today I've never been actually on this part of the creek. We got, let's get y'all back. Now my shop and the cabin were back here. This is where I built the original cabin on my channel, Masses32210. If uh, any longtime viewers uh, has seen that one, now I'll probably I'll put try to put a little card up in the corner where it'll show from the original time I, I found this site. Um, I'll take you over there and I'll show you exactly where my property ends. Right here where I'm at is actually a bordering on my neighbor's property, but we basically have an agreement since the creek itself cuts, well, I don't know, like say 60 feet of his property. It's uh, basically on my side of the creek that is mine to use. And uh, like I said, I do want to put a go-kart track in here and the property itself goes way further that way. That's going to be the next section that I'm going to come in and clean up. A lot of stuff like, as you can see, this tree, little stragglers that are barely getting sunlight from the larger trees is what I'm trying to kind of come in here and remove because all they're doing is taking nutrients from the bigger trees out. So I'm not clear cutting anything. What I'm trying to do is just get this whole thing cleaned up. <clears throat> now, right here in front of us, you see that we got, th there's three trees that have all uprooted one by one by one. And over here, you can kind of see this one right here. It's when it uprooted, it landed on, there's a double tree right there. It basically started creating it to uproot. And this is a major problem with this part of the, the creek is though it stays wet back here. And by coming in and thinning this out with such a machine, my intentions are to allow more sunlight to hit the ground and when it does it should dry it out faster it's my basic theory that and when you buy a piece of property you want to be able to uh, access the majority of it now if I was going to leave this original parcel for hunting land then I wouldn't do very much in here but since I do want to access it um, and like say back here and all this thick stuff I want to find the original property marker but it's almost going to be impossible I think if y'all want to watch, I'll, I'll do it in a fast frame motion, but I'm going to bring the machine in over here and we're going to try to go in. There's a cluster. I don't know if you can tell in the video, uh, way further than me, probably 50, 60 feet. There's a huge cluster of palmetto bushes and somewhere over there is going to be the property boundary between me and the neighbor. And what I'm trying to do is basically cut a straight line so that way I can kind of clear this out.
as y'all can see I have about four hours give or take involved in this uh, I've got it all down this right here what I ended up doing was basically cutting a straight line through all the palmettos with the property line I know the property line is somewhere in this vicinity so that's where I, how far I'm gonna take it the neighbor they have a three acre lot but they've only really cleared out about an acre and a half and I guess whether they just choose not to mess with this back here or don't have the money or whatever the issue is they choose not to clear out the back of their property but being that I believe from that tree to the creek it's about 60 something foot me and the neighbor behind me I have an agreement since that's his land right after that tree and there's a small strip on this side of the creek that he really can't access because of the creek and he's got 40 acres I have a total of three he told me he doesn't care what I do back here so basically it's a verbal agreement that this is mine back here so I'm a, like I told him well I'm gonna go ahead and maintain it the same as the rest you can see uh, besides the straggler trees that are back here like there's a whole group right there all those little thin twiggy stuff that's all gonna come out we got some trees that are just uprooted or whatever the case is I all I'm doing is cleaning them up I'm not gonna take down the bigger trees the whole purpose to clean this up is so that I can actually see my property I can maintain it and get some use out of it whatever I choose to do with it I figure if you pay for it might as well use it but the whole like I explained to my wife and other people one thing I don't do is or I don't want to do is clear cut this side there's a lot of healthy mature um, oaks maples and there's a couple pine trees the pines I'm not very fond of but they're here they're mature there's also uh, water oaks which hold a vast amount of water so when this place uh, when it does get real wet those trees are going to be the ones that are really sucking up a lot of the water now you can notice this right here this is not something I didn't uh, brush hog it's because there's a tree that uprooted or several trees I'm not sure what the case is so what we'll have to do or what I'll end up doing is coming back with uh, my little riding mower which is basically my little tractor I don't have a deck on it and I pull a small 4x8 trailer just for hauling out debris so once I do get back here I'll chop this up in pieces take it out to the burn pile uh, depending on how how punky the wood is if it's still usable as cooking wood being that this is an oak I might actually just take this over and split it and we'll keep it for the smoker project that will be on the other half of this channel masses 32210 so let me know what y'all think what do y'all think of this mighty brush cutter I think it's well worth it to own it give me a thumbs up please comment rate subscribe etc Definitely give me a thumbs up. Let it help this part of the channel grow and explore new opportunities.